All right, uh, hi guys. Um, so I'm gonna try and play a game of uh, Bello Ludi Pikes. Uh, this is a uh, big battle rule set published by uh, Bello Ludi. Uh, you can find this on War Games Vault in PDF, and uh, the, uh, the the author uh, Peter Van Gupp on the Bello Ludi website. You can also order a. Um, um, hard hardcover or hard uh, hard copy. I think it's spiral bound. Um, so, uh, according so the introduction, uh, Bella Ludi. It says, um, uh, "Welcome to the strategy game developed by Bella Ludi." Uh, these rules have been developed for people who have no previous experience in wargaming yet like to play games. Um, and so it it's essentially a core rule set. Um, that he has. I guess he write the Peter Vendop. I guess he's written all of them, but basically there's one for every period um, you, you really could want to play. Um, it's very similar, uh, hopefully, as you'll see, to the kind of Warlord system, although for this one I'm, I, I do appreciate that uh, there are some formation, particular formation rules, and uh, the rule book is only 28 pages, so it's really easy to uh, navigate much easier than the Pike and Shot rulebook, um, which is nice, but it's kind of, when you're actually playing a game, it can be kind of unwieldy, uh, I've noticed. Uh, but, um, so, it's a, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll get started. So one, one thing in the rules is um, you can use a D20, or one of their Bella Ludi um, dice that they sell on their website, uh, but it's the same. It's just a D20 with different markers, and we have uh, it's just to for command to determine how many moves uh, you get uh, per per turn, essentially. And so you organize your army with a battalion. Um, and or brigade, so you can command a brigade um, of, uh, you can issue orders to a unit or to a brigade, um, and each, uh, so the brigade of foot is built up by three or more units of 12 to 24 figures. Um, it's designed for 28 millimeters, so we're gonna. And since I'm playing 15 millimeter, um, obviously I'm gonna gonna half the ranges. Uh, but um, and based on the pictures, it looks like it's kind of designed for the the sort of warlord or like the the 40 by 40 mil bases that uh, you get like in the warlord box sets, but from other manufacturers too. But reading the rules there's no um like there's nothing uh, that that like specifies the frontage or like how a unit has to be formed other than you have column and line um but other than that you know and then there's like rules for big units um so uh okay I'll try and start playing, and I think for this video, well, I'll try and play a few turns and see um, see how how it goes. Um, so uh, I'll introduce what I've got. So I, I wanted to put kind of most of my Ottoman and Polish stuff on the table just because uh, it, I think it looks nice and it and it's fun. Um, I don't know if any everything will will be played, but so on the Polish side um, we have. Uh, the, the, the war wagons, but they're mostly just here to represent the Polish camp. Uh, I don't have enough kind of tents to, to make a full camp, but this, the, the general idea is this is a fictional scenario. Um, in the 17th century, the Polish force is kind of, kind of camped out, uh, for, for the night or, and they, they're near this Ottoman garrison. And, um, so now there's kind of a meeting engagement. Um, there's, uh, this will be like a thicket of trees. Uh, we've got the Polish camp, and then I've divided the Polish forces into. Uh, we've got a battalion, cavalry battalion here, um, 
and then yeah, it says we need three units to make a battalion, but I don't know if that'll work with the number of figures I have. But um, I think what I'll do is I'll just say that we've got um, a battalion of of um, of the infantry and the hussars with the infantry is kind of like a commanded shot type of thing. Now in the rules, do, do they have, do the battalions have to be all the same? Okay, so Yeah, so when rules is written, it, it's brigades of foot or brigades of cavalry, no mixed brigades. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, well, uh, I'll just say that for now, just because I don't have enough figures, um, this will just be one brigade uh, for, for, for this test game to just to try and get, start, st get started. Um, and then this one... Um, I think what I'll do is I'll split off, split the Cossack style infantry into two, two units, just so that gives, gives three. And then we've got, uh, another, we've got three over here of, of Polish cavalry. We've got the Wallachian style cavalry and two units of, of, uh, Pinserny here. So that's the Polish side. Uh, and then go over to the Ottoman side. Uh, the Ottomans have a lot more stuff, as was often the case. Uh, so we've got a unit, a brigade of cavalry here. Uh, we've got the artillery. I'm not sure we'll do artillery, just because I'm just trying to learn the rules. Uh, we've got the infantry brigade with the Janissaries up front. Uh, i got another cavalry brigade. Um, the, uh, the camp followers are pike, but... Uh, I don't think they'll do much. I, I kind of just put them there more to more for flavor. We've got our Ottoman uh, Pasha. And then over here, I wanted to use some of the Safavid units as like Eastern uh, Ottoman troops. Uh, so, or, you know, troops from like kind of the Polish borderland. Uh, so I've got a brigade. He, he's just the brigade commander. And then we've got three units of, uh, of, of more uh, Turkic horse. So... Um, that's what we have, and um, all right. Well, uh, get uh, we'll get uh, rolling. So uh, we need to first roll for initiative. Okay, so the Ottoman uh, cavalry brigades moved up on the flanks. Uh, one thing I, I'm trying to do uh, with this game is through this with the rules also um, is to try and actually play like the Ottoman tactics would have worked. So typically they like to try and do these big grand encirclements, uh, which because they had cavalry and really good cavalry in the West, they were a little bit better. Um, but I think because the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was also really good. Uh, with cavalry and they were fighting on these kind of open steps that's where they they were sort of more equally matched uh, the, the the Turks uh, but anyway uh, so that's what I'm, I'm trying to kind of simulate with this but um, so uh, for the gameplay uh, for, for the, yeah the turn um, the uh, uh, the the Janissaries here tried to fire at the Hussars uh, they were not successful, they missed. Uh, however, these Janissaries fired on the uh, Polish infantry uh, and they were able to get two hits. So they're now disordered. So if when they try to shoot, uh, they'll take a minus one. Um, uh, one thing is with the, the shooting, uh, at least there's not a lot of dice you have to throw uh, with normal size shot units. You only have to uh, throw two dice. Um, and then uh, so they've taken two two uh, two casualties basically, uh, and then in in these rules on four 
they are shaken, and then if they take seven, uh, if a unit takes seven, they are removed from the table. So that's the uh, Ottoman turn. Uh, now, when you when you do in Bella Ludi, when you, you when you take your turn, you do everything up to uh, close combat. So y you do your side's move, and then um, and then you do uh, and shooting, and then you do I, I, and then close combat. Uh, is resolved after that. So now we'll shift to the pull. Now we'll do the Polish turn. Um, I think I'm going to try and get the poles to to make contact uh, with the uh, with the uh, Ottoman uh, cavalry. Um, and another thing is the hussars could try and crash into the center line. However, um, you know there's this other Ottoman cavalry brigade coming up. And um, one thing uh, the rules simulate, uh, which is, um, I'm, I'm going to compare this to Pikeman's Lament because there's some similarities in terms of like, it's kind of a simpler game, um, you know, not to not to insult it. It's just uh, Pikeman's Lament. You know, you don't have like cavalry, like uh, close combat support from neighboring units, uh, but this game you do. So, um, so the if the Ottomans come around, uh, they could. Um, you know, use that uh, cavalry uh, support, and um, and end up um, uh, you know really messing up the uh, messing up the uh, uh, the, the winged hussars, even though they are elite heavy cavalry. Okay, I'll now do the, the Polish moves and uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, the first move on the Polish side I did to try and get like the close combat going, I moved, so I got uh, three moves for this brigade, uh, and I decided to have the, the heavier, the Lancer cavalry move uh, in, in the center, and then um, to have the Cossack style cavalry, cavalry on the wings to, um, so they're going to get the support when, when, I, when, when we resolve close combat. And then um, I think uh, in the center, uh, I'm going to have the uh, Hussars stay put for now. Um, I think it, it would be better to wait for the Ottoman commander to come through um, and try to, try to, I think, um, you know, I think what, uh, what an Ottoman commander might try to do uh, would be to come through here to try and crash into this flank um, but at the same time, the poles, uh, are kind of in a little bit of a, a little bit of a conundrum, I think, uh, so, cause they could go in and attack, uh, here, uh, this, this, uh, battalion, but then they've also got the Ottomans coming through here. Um, now one, one thing with the rules, uh, is, you know, there's not like a lot of fine detail about like how the formations are supposed to move other than you have line or or block whatever the case may be for different formations or you can have them move in a column um, but there's nothing unless I read too quickly but I don't think so that you know it doesn't there's no rules against you know having them move kind of like this um, so okay so now I'll go ahead and roll for the Polish movement uh, on the on this right flank. And uh, get a d20. Uh, 14, so uh, that gives the battalion two moves. Um, so, now one thing um, I'm not sure is if you do a battalion move, that means that they all have to be the same type of cavalry or that they get, uh, they all can move their own movement rate. Um, but I've been, you know, moving the units at their own rate. So we've got our uh, medium cavalry is uh, moves it to six inches and we've got the uh, Wallachian style cavalry back here. They're going to move seven and a half since they're considered light. So um, I'm going to have the, I think what I'll do is 
these guys will move up to make contact with the uh, with these guys, which will be uh, which I can test since they're light cavalry, they're Tatars, uh, they might be able to fall back uh, during the uh, to receive the charge. So and we'll have these guys also move up six inches. And I think I'll do a, like that. Um, and then to give these guys the close combat support, I'll have the light cavalry move up since they can also move kind of uh, further out. You know, I'll have them kind of move, give seven and a half, and they can come up on the side. And uh, let's say that's, you know, they're going to get the support from the cavalry okay so uh, I did uh, and now we'll do shooting uh, so the uh, Pol Polish the Polish um, musketeers are gonna fire back at the brigade of Janissary or the, the regiment of Janissaries that shot at them uh, so two misses uh, and, and they would get a minus one, so it would be three, so they don't, not able to hit. Um, okay, uh, and now I can set up for doing the close combat. So I'll get, get all that set and then, uh, and then continue with the, the gameplay. Okay, so um, with the close combat, so our, our uh, Lithuanian cavalry um, uh, charged into the uh, into these Ottoman Spahi. Uh, so uh, what happens is because the uh, the Lithuanian cavalry have the two Cossack style cavalrymen units on either side for the combat resolution they get uh, it's, it counts as like two hits basically. Uh, so the, the, the Ottomans scored no hits and the, um, the Petsy Horsi scored two. So uh, the the uh, so the the and they failed their uh, morale check, uh, which is rolled on d6. So they fall back uh, one move. So they're going to just fall back six. Now, it doesn't say explicitly in the rules what you do if um, if you like have to fall back through one of your own units. It uh, doesn't explain that. So. Um, for, for now, I'm just going to uh, have, uh, these guys are just gonna fall back uh, six inches kind of this way. Um, and we'll just say, maybe for the sake of immersion, that if the artillery wanted to fire, kind of their their view is, is, at least this one cannon, the view is temporarily obscured by the, kind of the, the retreating cavalry. Um, Okay, so that's that combat. Um, now we can, now uh, there is a follow-up move, so I can, uh, so there's pursuit, there are pursuit rules. Uh, so, okay, so we can roll in pursuit of these guys. So we're going to roll on the command die, and they get a, uh, they got a six, so, um, so that would give them one move of uh, six inches, and if they overtake, uh, if they overtake the fleeing unit, that unit is deemed destroyed. And yeah, they would overtake the Spahi, so the unit is destroyed. So, uh, and then that's, uh, that's a close combat. Uh, and then uh, over here, I think um, I'll go ahead and run through the other combat. Uh, so we'll go over to the other uh, Polish cavalry and they're gonna try. They're, they're gonna try and charge the Tatars, um, and they'll make contact. Um, 
and they will try it. But the Tatars being uh, light cavalry, uh, they're going to try and evade. So we need to look at how to do that quickly. A uh, light horse can evade as a charred response. Uh, so uh, on a roll of one, two, or three on the command die, uh, which is um, you know on the d20, so we'll go ahead and roll for that. So they got a three which means, oh, zero. So on a roll of zero or B, which is 20 uh, with a regular D20, so they, they're gonna, the Tatars are gonna receive the charge and they will get uh, the, the uh, Polish cavalrymen will get, uh, I think, charge support. Uh, so, Let's see, they're within four inches. Okay, so they have two units within four inches, and the Ottomans also have this cavalry unit within four, let's see, within four inches of the Tatars. I'm not being super strict with the measurements in this game. Um, light, okay, so now I'll have to check uh, if, So, um, okay, so I guess if you're defending, you also get support. So they're going to get one, so the Tatars will get one support. Um, now the, the Poles will get plus one because they're the ones charging, but uh, so let's see how many dice we have to throw for each. So the... So light horse gets six. Uh, so six for light horse. And we have just regular horse get four. because we're saying these are both. Okay, so go ahead and roll. You're gonna need fives or sixes on the Tatars. So we've got one, two, so three. Uh, that's three hits. Um, plus, and then they'll basically get one uh, point in the close combat result because they have this supporting unit and the poles will get uh, we'll get plus two points already, and then they're going to need, uh, so they will get, that's one, two, um, plus two. So it ends up being a tie um, between the two armies. Um, And I forgot for the close combat to add the, the chits onto the units. So let's see. So these guys have, these Polish Pinserni have three, and the, the Tatars have two. Um, so let's see what happens if it's a tie. Um, Should A have rolled four hits? Okay. Um, okay, so combat will... Okay, so if it's a tie, the combat just continues to the next um, turn.
Okay, um, I think for the video, uh, I'll just leave it off here. Uh, I, I mostly just wanted to try and try the rules out. Uh, I'm not going to play a full full game. Um, but, uh, and also I just kind of wanted to have my miniatures out. So uh, these are the rules. I, I think they're uh, pretty good, you know, pretty fast playing. Um, I, I do appreciate in the, so um, there's a basic list of just like pike shot and horse. And then I do appreciate that there is an advanced rule section that explains um, you have like heavy elite uh, in, or heavy infantry, uh, you have levies, um, and, and you know, a bunch of other kind of different unit types. Um, I'm glad, uh, you know, I'm glad that there's kind of both. So it's not just generic lists. Or it is, I mean, they're generic lists, but there are more kind of details, and it also accommodates for um, like the, the, the Tercio, uh, the uh, Swedish Brigade, and um, the, I think it, it also has one for the Dutch style uh, infantry brigade. Um, yeah, Swedish system, uh, Dutch, and yeah, and Tercio. Um, yeah, so I think for, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty nice quick set of rules. Um, you know, I think it's also when it's something where you could easily, I, I, I would, like the warlord rules, you know, you could easily kind of write up more detailed army lists. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a perfectly fine system. Um, there's a lot of variants, um, that, that the, uh, Bella Ludi has published. So there's ancients. Um, yeah, not much more else to say. Uh, I do think that, uh, just for my setup, uh, I will say, which is unrelated to the rules, even with 15 millimeter, my my table gets a little crowded. Uh, I'm not sure how big it is. I think it's like a five by four or four by four table, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that's what that's the Bella Ludi rules. Um, and uh, I think if I was gonna kind of put it in, uh, just if I was going to compare it, I would say that it's very similar to, to like the warlord systems. Um, but it's also much more better. It's also much better, um, laid out just in the rules writing and then the explanations are, are very clear. Um, and, and for a system that's kind of marketed or, or, you know, says in the introductions for people that are newer to war games, I think it's really good, uh, for, for that purpose. Uh, and, Compared to Pikeman's Lament, which if you know the channel, that's kind of the main game I've played. Uh, I think this is a little better. Uh, it just adds a couple extra details that Pikeman's Lament doesn't really use because that's more of like a kind of um, skirmish level, company level, let's say. Uh, this is more suited to just kind of slightly larger battles. So I think I'll stick with this. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's nice that there's, like I said, just there's reactions, there's kind of cavalry, um, you know, c close combat support rules. Um, so yeah, uh, I check, check these rules out and, uh, you know, like I said, he, they, on their war games vault page, they have, um, a, a bunch of different variations on it. So, um, I, I like, I haven't tried those, but I like these, uh, Nice, quick playing game. Uh, for solo gaming, uh, I think this is what I'll just mention and then wrap it up. Uh, the only thing w is, uh, you know, Pikeman's Lament does have kind of the more randomized system where, you know, if you kind of fail your activation, you lose your turn. And then that can kind of create some more interesting, um, some some kind of more interesting unexpected things if you're, if you're solo gaming. But... Um, you know, uh, that, that's just a difference, uh, not really a criticism of, of this rule set. Uh, and also it mentions that they have some, uh, at the end of the book, it mentions that there are some cards, um, 
Bella Ludi has created three sets of cards to use with your chosen set of rules. Uh, the, these cards have been developed in order to create more interaction in the game. Uh, there are 21 positive cards, 21 negative, and 12 commandant cards. Uh, so uh, I think that's a nice feature. Uh, so I, I, I think um, if I keep playing this, I'll check those out um, and get some of the cards. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, all right. That's uh, that's the video. I hope you like the, the overview of these rules, and um, I'll try to keep uh, playing. I'll try to play more, but the, the, the main issue is more logistical, like uh, this table I have is kind of my table for for working and, and like eating and stuff, so I don't, sometimes it's uh, not really, I have to kind of prepare because I have a bunch of books always that I have to put away and then put back. Um, but anyway, um, all right, that's enough for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.